tell me a story. What? In the movie Tolkien, there's a scene in a very posh tea shop, and there's an Edwardian band in the background with a singer. And that singer is me. The scene is really exquisite. It shows the two young people using their imaginations to invent worlds. The song that's performed in the background. Whoa, where did I put it? Oh, it's down there. This is the piece of music. It's very brief. It's just to give you a bit of atmospheric to take you to 1910. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about it. I've had this piece of music since I was 12. I collected old music because it was cheap. In fact, it was free. If you want old music, you just send that word out and you will be avalanched under it. It's called The Four Indian Love Lyrics. And the song that you hear in the movie, very briefly, is called Pale Hands I Loved Beside the Shalimar, or Kashmiri Song. It was written in 1902. This piece of music is from 1904. It was hugely popular. The pale Hands I Loved Beside the Shalimar, particularly, it inspired hand creams, nail polishes, and two perfumes, one of which is still available in Duty Free today. Opera singers sang it, music hall singers sang it, popular singers sang it, even celebrities who weren't known for their singing, like Rudolph Valentino, sang it. In 1924, this song and the other three were performed by musicians pretty much on rotation in the India Pavilion in the British Empire exhibition in Wembley. So, is the Kashmiri song, Pale Hands I Loved Beside the Shalimar, actually from Kashmir? Are the four Indian love lyrics actually Indian? No. You could say they're Edwardian kitsch, tacky, colonial exoticism, uh, cultural appropriation, and deeply inappropriate to be performed at Wembley's India Pavilion. They were written by two women. Amy wrote the music, Violet wrote the lyrics. Amy Woodford Finden was born in Chile, the daughter of the US consul there. When she was in her teens, she went to London and studied music. She composed under the name of Amy Ward. When she was 34, she married Lieutenant Colonel Woodford Finden, a surgeon in the Bengal army. They went to India, and that was when her music took on a whole different quality. There are ostinato rhythms, uh, whole tone scales, melismas. It's not as if other composers didn't do this at the time, but Amy Woodford Finden made it more obvious. Within about, within one bar, you're, you're right there. It's very obvious, it's very direct. And uh, a, a, somebody like me at the age of 12 could open this up play a couple of seconds and go, wow. It was pop music. It says here that the lyrics are by Lawrence Hope. That was the pen name of Violet Nicholson, who was born Adela Corey, just north of Bristol. Uh, when she was 16, the family moved to Lahore. She helped her father to edit the Sindh Gazette and she was fluent in Urdu and Hindi. She accompanied her husband, Colonel Nicholson of the Bombay Army, to the northwest frontier, dressed as a Pashtun boy, passing as his groom. Together, the couple entertained people of many different castes and, and classes and nationalities. The snooty Raj wives mocked her, because she was, as they put it, vilely and impossibly clothed. She had a heavy fringe, she wore her hair down, and she liked to wear saris every day, and she didn't really care what they thought. She published her first poems in 1900, not only using the pseudonym, but also claiming in the preface that they were translations. In fact, the public domain poetry website still says underneath her entry, most of her work is translations from Indian poetry. It ain't. Her poetry scandalized society, but it wasn't dismissed by everybody as colonial rubbish. Kamala Das, poet and writer from Kerala, said she wrote erotic poems of flesh, blood, bangles and charm bracelets. That is a poet I could identify with. 
Aga Shahid Ali, the poet from Kashmir who died in Massachusetts, based his extremely melancholy poem tonight on Pale Hands I Love Beside the Shalimar. Link to it in the description. In fact, I'm going to link all of Violet Nicholson's poetry because archive.org has shared it in these beautiful facsimile editions and you can judge for yourself. It's very Edwardian. Oh, it's passionate. In fact, I'll link the songs themselves in the description because they're copyright free. Give them a try on your piano. Violet Nicholson, a.k.a. Lawrence Hope, became a widow at the age of 39. She wrote a despairing poem, locked herself in a room, and swallowed perchloride of mercury. Her obituary was written by Thomas Hardy, and the poem formed the preface to her last volume of poetry, published 1904, four short years after she published her first. Amy Woodford Finden died in 1919, seated at her piano. Some say she was in the process of writing another song. I've actually written a book called She Wrote the Songs. It's going to be published this summer. And it's about the women who wrote the most popular songs in the Edwardian and Victorian eras. I've made a CD to go with it. It features Andrea Kmetsov on the piano, and you've been listening to it. It'll be available very soon. Do keep an eye out on this channel. This is my very first two camera. Good Lord, it's difficult. Let me know if you like it. And if you'd like more, subscribe. Press the, press the bell or whatever you do. Subscribe. Thank you so much. Um, This is a grandmother clock. She doesn't have a name. You can name my grandmother clock. I've stopped her for the time being, not just because of the ticking, but so that you don't see the passage of time and how long it's taken me to talk very simply to a camera for just a few minutes. It's shame making. What's this? What's this? I'm trying to use the hands because they're there. The hands are there. Both the women who wrote Pale Hands I Loved Beside the Shalimar lived in India, loved India, and created waves with their inspiration. It's waves better. Waves is better. Waves! <laughs> ah, this is so hard. Keep smiling and keep blinking. Those are the two tips that I read and I'm trying, oh, I'm trying so hard.